Good Thursday morning, and welcome to Ice Age TV. This is interesting. <laughs> My kid is outside getting something out of the truck in her nighty gown. Look at this. Is anybody witnessing this? Here. Hey, good morning. Everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Ice Age TV, the internal combustion engine age YouTube channel that talks about the cars and trucks and motorcycles. And the interesting morning of my child getting going that's Dad. halfway dressed. Dad. And Dad. My truck is covered in pollen. Brutal. Well, Rick already is not happy this morning, apparently, because she spent hours and hours of cleaning her truck. And Mother Nature has polluted it. Yes, Mother Nature has been bad. Yeah, my daughter really spent a lot of time yesterday cleaning up the black Ram truck, the best it's looked in ages. I mean, I'm not lying. This truck really looked pretty bad. Sound like looking at the kid, like, are you going to kind of take care of your truck there, kid? But she did it. Come on, pups. Cool morning here. Beautiful day. And, yeah, a little different change up this morning. See my kid out here. In her... Hey, ah, ah, ah. Nope. 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 Get in the barn. Let's go come on get in get in i know what you're gonna do will you're yeah we spent the evening no willow no get in the barn i know what you're gonna do dude get in come on let's go yeah we spent the uh evening cleaning vehicles i was gonna clean my truck but my daughter she uh she got me motivated to clean the big ford tremor truck right here that i have barely even driven and for the record she likes that ram truck over the uh, Tremor Carly uh, Ford F-250 Platinum. I mean, this is a really great truck. I mean, for me, I guess I'm just too much of a kid in life. I mean, this is so like being a kid. When you come up to this truck and you try to get in this truck, I mean, for me, this truck, this thing, now I know why my left shoulder's hurting me. This morning, I woke up. Why is my left sh shoulder really sore this morning? Well, let me sh This here... This is this is radical. Okay, look at look at my knees. Look where I am. Look. This, no, no. This is above my knees. Okay. So for me to get in this truck, I have to pull. I have to pull myself into this truck with my left arm. Wow. I mean, and it's getting me. What the hell is going on with this truck? With the uh, seat keeps on moving up. Uh, who the hell knows? But this is the truck with the Carly special suspension on it. And a Carly suspension is supposed to give this thing like a nicer ride, a more comfortable ride. That's the whole thing if you spend a gazillion dollars on the package with the Carly. Very expensive package. I mean, pretty cool. But I don't think he used Carly all around. I don't think he used the, the rear springs are not Carly. They're Deaver. So I don't know why the guy cut the corners on that. I'm not real sure. But anyways, it's not cheap. Got this freaking uh, bed thing in there that I do not like. I got to get rid of that thing. It just takes up too much room. I'm not going to use that. I need to advertise that and sell it. But anyway, so the whole Carly suspension idea is to make it a softer, or not only say softer, but it's supposed to handle terrain better, more comfortable ride. Yeah, comfort and comfortable. And I think that's going to be our theme for the morning is going to be, let's talk about the comfort, come on pups, of the vehicles that we buy. And hey, this Ford Raptor is one of the most comfortable um, SUVs in this segment vehicles ever bought. This thing is just so badass. And the Jeep Grand Wagoneer way out there, that's the most comfortable SUV I've ever owned per se as well. So all about the comfort. Isn't that kind of the, the, uh, the car industry's goal is building cars that are comfortable, comfortable for our... Uh, Oh boy, Sig, <laughs> this ain't gonna work. I got all the windows open here. I cleaned up the office last night. And I can't get the door closed. I'm spilling my coffee just about. It's cold too, and I, I did a lot of cleaning to a degree. All the dirt that he makes it now. Get the fan going. It's cold. Burr. I could actually, I mean, borderline. I should turn on the uh, fan. My daughter's like, you can get the pool going this year. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. That's so much work. But I don't know. I think we spend a lot more time here 
this uh, summer. Oh yeah, see here on the big window too. I gotta get my one yet this morning. Yeah, surprise after surprise. <laughs> Me coming out to the office. Everything's kind of been thrown off course a little bit with the kid out here getting her stuff. Let me get this big ass window. Wow, this thing is so big. Yeah, you enjoying this yet? Enjoying the scenery? I hear you. To make it comfortable. For me, it's too cold. It's just too cold in here. So I get these windows closed, but I aired everything out and try to get. I mean, everything is trashed. It's a barn. What do you expect? Get my little heater on here. Yeah, I think that I'll just turn this big heater on as it is because it's cold. Yeah, frost warning down there in southern Virginia. So anybody that didn't have their heat on last night, they probably woke up this morning saying, man, it's not that comfortable. Get my, um, let me see here, get my thing here all lined up. Oh my gosh. What the heck, right? Jesus Christ, there's too much, too much stuff. Too much information on all that stuff, right? <laughs> so anyways, it's all about the comfort. That's what I thought to myself this morning. Let's talk about the comfort and let's, um, okay. let's, yeah, how do we, how do we, yeah, just, oh my gosh, right? Collect my thoughts, yeah, distraction, just the little things can distract us, right? Yes, so true. So, yeah, so cars, for us, you know, the, the manufacturers over the years have definitely made cars more accommodating, more comfortable. I mean, you go look at over the past 100 years of the uh, technology that's been advanced in cars, and, and I talk about it all the time with the EV age up on us. It just seems like the EV age is driving even more creature comfort technology for the vehicles, but even even without the EV vehicles, like that Ford Trummer truck, I've talked about it many times. So I went to the Ford truck brand in 2000, late 2017, 2018, because of the adaptive cruise control and because of uh, massaging seats. Yeah, I mean that's why I uh, that's why you know I went to that brand and and for me because I just live behind the wheel of a truck. And having those massaging seats is such a nice feature, even though, what a joke, the Ford Power Boost, I mean, total joke. If I buy a Ford Power Boost, platinum package, and no massaging seats, I mean, ridiculous. It's just ridiculous to me. It really is. I mean, that just irks me because that's an $84,000 truck. I mean, beyond believable. The comfort level, how many people are comfortable with the pricing anymore? I mean, beyond believable. It's ridiculous. And so... Anyway, so for me, the Ford truck brand really populated over the Ram, you know, product years ago. I dumped all my Ram trucks because I had the 3500 Mega Cab Dually that I special ordered on my birthday, and had the Ram 2500 Mega Cab with the Ram box the back. It had the Ram 1500, so I had all the series Ram trucks, but I just wasn't happy with them because of the comfort uh, features that Ford had over them. So I parted with the Ram trucks and went forward. And even though I've got Ram trucks back, if you haven't noticed, even though I've gotten the, the Jeep brand back, if you haven't noticed, I mean, so it's just incredible how I went from being a total Ram Jeep guy over the Ford side, now I'm back to the Ram Jeep Dodge side all over again. And yeah, you know, what drives that besides craziness, right? So the comfort level for us as individuals when we go and evaluate cars, I mean, I think that's a huge part of you coming to closure of you buying your vehicle. Is it comfortable? Is it a comfortable riding car? And everybody knows that, boy, if you've been around long enough, there's plenty of cars out there that are not comfortable. The seats, I've talked about this numerous times over the years about mid-sized trucks and smaller trucks like the Toyota trucks and just in then small cars. Excuse me. The uh, the comfort of sitting in a seat. When you have like a captain's chair, meaning you have like what I'm sitting in right now, you're you're in a nice captain's chair where you're sitting up and your legs, you know, kind of borderline support you a little bit. 
that to me is the most comfortable vehicle body posture you can own the vehicle. If you buy a car where your legs are more, I should say, horizontal, <laughs> where you sit down in that seat and you're sitting like on the floor of the vehicle, basically, and your legs are pretty, you know, pretty, instead of kind of being like this is your architecture of your body, this is your legs here, your legs are more like this, and here's your, you know, your, your head is up here, and your body's like this, where the most of your seat of your pants are on that seat, and you don't really have any leg support, that is the worst type of vehicle you can buy because it'll wear you out. And I know because I live in, in vehicles. And it's a huge difference in riding around or going on long trips of where your body is being beat up and doesn't have that leg support that you get out of a captain chair. So when you're looking at a vehicle or want to buy a car, it's it's so much more advantageous to own a vehicle that has you sitting upright in that vehicle and you have borderline leg support into your lower body. Otherwise, your what happens is your tailbone, your your gluteus maximus, your you know your spine. You you have back you have back aches. You're not you're not comfortable. And it really does do harm to your body. So, but that's the downside of the smaller cars. I mean, smaller cars are price point vehicles, or a sports car has to be designed for that low profile roof so they can do crazy speeds like that new Rimic Nevera. You hear about that new electric 1900 horsepower uh, vehicle? I mean, oh my gosh, that thing's insane. It's the Rimic, I think R M I A C Nevera N E V E R A. Some guy, Matt Rimic or something, designed it, owns that company, and that thing's a 250 mile an hour car. Basically, it does zero to 249 miles an hour, back to zero in 29 point like nine three seconds. So you can go from zero to 200 and basically 50 miles an hour. And back to zero within borderline less than 30 seconds. It does zero to 60 in like 1.74 seconds. It does the quarter mile at 164 miles an hour at like in the eights, the mid eights. It's a monster. It's a four wheel, all wheel, motor driven electric car that's just an insane, badass ass, you know, electric built car to date. Yeah, it's going to continue. What's your comfort level in riding in that thing? Could you imagine being in that car with a person that did all that? You would just be like, I'm sure you'd be like, holy, you'd just be like, wow. You, I know for myself, I would be intimidated. I'd be borderline scared. I'd be like, whoa, you know, because you aren't used to that type of inertia. So I would not be comfortable initially in that car or to even drive that car. I mean, yeah, right. No way. I mean, yeah, some people, yeah, if you don't know what you're doing, bye-bye, it can happen. So, so back to the comfort level in cars, so more so than ever today, if you kind of think about the trend, what is the trend? The trend is people love the Ford F-150 truck. People love big SUVs. People love even, you know, the midsize, like the Jeep Grand Cherokee that I bought for my wife. That has that body posture seating that accommodates you. The Ford Ranger truck, to a degree, has pretty good posture like that. But the point is, I think unbeknownst to most people, they're not even really uh, cognizant of what's going on and their love of their bigger vehicles is what I just talked about. Is that when you get into a bigger vehicle, like the full-size you know, F-Series trucks that I own, or the Ram trucks, you have the captain's chair. You have that capability of sitting in that vehicle and your body posture is so much better and you feel so much more in command of your vehicle because the way you sit up i mean like the nissan the nissan 300z i think that's like the snoopy car and the reason i say that is because the way you sit in that car you're sitting on the floor and it's like the window i've talked about this before if you ever seen somebody in a, a nissan 300 zx you'll see like just the head of their body for the most part. It's the way that car is designed and that big door and that little window. And, and that's the first thing I figured out when I drove that car, which kind of turned me off, was I literally felt like I was sitting on the floor of the vehicle 
And then when I looked out the window, I mean, I felt like all you'd see is my head. And it just made me think of an, a cartoon character of driving that vehicle. And it was just not that, you know, comfortable. And that's the downside to the Corvettes. You sit in those Corvettes, and it's the same thing. You're sitting on the floor of the vehicle. They have to for the architecture of the vehicle to be such a, you know, aerodynamic vehicle and not be um, this big egg-shaped looking type of a car. And that's the crossover. You know, you get to buy a crossover like my Mustang Mach-E. Yeah, you get pretty good body posture. It's not as big as being a full-size vehicle, but it still gives you that better, you're not like sitting on the floor. So, like the Dodge Challenger, somewhat, you know, so once you kind of go in the cat, once you get out of the truck and the big vehicles, they just don't have the headroom or the per se, they just don't have that capability because of the design of the architecture of the car. And that's why I say, I think that's, that's unbeknownst to many people, they like these bigger vehicles because they get the captain's chair. And the smaller vehicles, you don't get that. So it beats you up. And, and then once again, the massaging seats and the vehicles, I mean, that's huge on a road trip. I mean, it's so cool. Well, it's really interesting. Ford, on their massaging seats, you can turn it on. And it used to turn off after so many minutes. But now, it'll just stay on forever. I mean, literally. But Jeep, for whatever reason, you know, they turn it turns off. After like 15 minutes going on the road, you have to reactivate it. Yeah, so the comfort creatures of cars, that's, I mean, that's the sales pitch from the manufacturer to have all these um, nice, comfortable things you can do with a car, you know, memory memory seat, how you have if different people are driving the car. You can have your recall memory, which that's a nice feature if you show the vehicle somebody else because who doesn't get aggravated and get in the car and get to reset everything. So that's a that's a comfort feature. The For me, the adapt, adaptive cruise control, that's a great comfort feature that, that I just love. I mean, the Blue Cruise is a nice feature. I mean, there's a fine line there in that Blue Cruise, like the hands-free driving. is It's cool, but you really do have to stay attentive to the vehicle because it, it just kind of turns off and on so much. I mean, so you, you can't get too comfortable. But it is nice. I mean, it's nice to take your hands off the steering wheel, and you still want to be within reason of reach to the steering wheel for the what if. So that is nice. That's a nice comfort feature. Some people I don't think will would trust it or use it. But, you know, it's all about the comfort. I mean, cars, for us, as time has progressed, it's all been about a more comfortable vehicle and a more reliable vehicle. And that's the really cool today is, like, the Hellcats and the GT500, these high-performance cars, not only in some aspects are they comfortable, but they're reliable, which, you know, years ago, if you're in my era, you couldn't get that out of a high-performance car. There's just no way you could build an 800-horsepower car back in the 70s and have it be a daily driver, a reliable car. I mean, very, very extremely challenging, you know, even the 80s, even the 90s. So for the automotive industry to broaden the ice age, the amount of power that they have with reliability and comfort, where that Mustang GT500, that car definitely had comfort features and then just all-out race features. And that's the thing I've always talked about and the big difference between the Hellcat product to the Shelby product. When you go to the GT500 Mustang in comparison to the Dodge Challenger, Challenger is like a sedan, Cadillac, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, BMW, whatever you want to call it. It gives you such an incredibly luxurious road car feel. It doesn't feel like a performance car. And once you go to the track settings or the sports settings, yeah, it definitely gives it a little bit more of that sport feeling. But it's night and day. Versus the GT500 Mustang, that thing just radiates race me. That thing just radiates total race car. And is it as comfortable as the, as the Challenger? No, it's not. The seating is not as comfortable. The Dodge Challenger is much more comfortable. The Dodge Challenger is a bigger vehicle. So on a long road trip, 
the Dodge Challenger is by far the better, more comfortable package car. But as far as the fun factor goes, of just feeling like you're driving a race car, the GT500 radiates that more in its personality because of the different exhaust modes you can get out of it and that DCT transmission and that rev matching. The rev matching on the exhaust is just incredible. It is so much fun. Dodge doesn't bring that. So the Dodge fun factor on the Hellcat is not as fun as the GT500. I mean... It's not. And I've said this many times. If I had to pick and choose, if Ford had announced the same thing Dodge had announced, that they were at the end of the road of building any more gas Mustangs, and I had to choose between keeping the GT500s or the Hellcats, I probably would let the Hellcats go, and I would probably get the GT500s. Because the GT500 is just a more fun driving car. I mean, it really is. Now, I think the Challenger has the better retro, batter ass look. But as far as just the comfort, you know, in the Mustang, the comfort radiates more into the, the racing comfort mentality, if you get that. So for the car industry, and even in the motorcycle industry, they've, they've advanced technology for the comfort for you to... Uh, I, mean, I think Indians' motorcycles are far more comfortable than the Harley Davidson motorcycles because the Indian motorcycle has a longer wheelbase. I mean, it really is incredible how years ago, when I was really on the sidelines researching the Indian product, the touring motorcycles, the bagger bikes, um, I really was always skeptical of what Indian was doing, meaning that Indian had a little longer suspension, or I should say a little longer wheelbase, and... It had aluminum frame, and it had a smaller rear tire. Now, years ago, I was going to buy the BMW um, Bagger 1800 GT. It was like the KB 1800. It was it was actually a BMW's new uh, bike that it was trying to compete with the Harley and the Indian uh, brand of a Bagger Sport touring bike. And I was very interested in that motorcycle. And I went and rode that bagger. I think it was called the, the K, you know, 1800B or something like that. And I went and rode that bike. And I was totally turned off on that bike. Because when I rode that bike, and here's what the selling point of that bike was. It had a longer um, wheelbase than the regular K1600 GT uh, motorcycle. Or 1800. I'm not a big Beamer guy anymore, so I just... I'm losing all my, you know, exact models. But anyways, the K1800 is basically the nice touring bike with a, with a tour pack on it. Or you can get the 1800 with the non-tour pack. It's more sporty, kind of like behind a gold wing you know, that you've seen me buy. And so, but then they came out with the Bagger Edition to compete with the Harley and the Indian brand. And the, I guess the, the uh, Yamaha and the, and the Kawasaki, but more tailored towards Harley Davidson. So I rode that motorcycle. I'll never forget, going down the road, I could feel the bike, like, do a little bit of like dancing on the back end. It was weird, and it was very soft. So as I drive that bike down the road, it was just kind of a very lazy type of feel. And I could kind of feel that back end with that long suspension. That bike kind of had a little bit of a, a wiggle to it. And I was like, no way. That bike, to me, it was just no fun of it. Too soft, too borderline squirrely feeling. And I didn't buy the bike. So when I was researching the Indian, the first thing that caught my attention was they have a longer wheelbase over the Harley. And they have that smaller rear tire. So my inclination was that's going to be the same thing as that Beamer bike. It's going to have that kind of loose rear end, and it's going to have that aluminum frame where it's not as solid, and it's not a rear smaller tire, so the bumps, you're really going to feel those bumps. Wow, how wrong was I? Oh, my gosh. The Indian motorcycle's longer wheelbase just gobbles up the road. The Indian motorcycle's rear tire has no impact on the, you know, the, the way the bike feels. And that aluminum frame and the way they put the, uh, they, they built the engine, 
for the center of gravity that Indian motorcycle is night and day better than the Harley Davidson. And I've said it so many times. The first thing you notice you get on Indian motorcycle when you come off the kickstand is you don't really have to use a lot of effort to get it off the kickstand. The Harley Davidson, it literally is, ugh, I mean, it is very challenging. You ain't no wimp getting a Harley Davidson dress bike off the kickstand, especially if you got gear in it, especially if you're on the angle of a hill. Yeah, wow. So the Indian, night and day on that. And then going down the highway, the comfort and confidence of the Indian motorcycle is like night and day. I mean, that bike just eats up the bumps. And it's so nimble. And it has like a sport bike feel, kind of like that Honda Goldwing does. And, I mean, then plus the engine. It sounds like a sewing machine. It's just so refined over that Harley engine. I mean, a Harley's a lead sled. I mean, the Harley Davidson is truly a lead sled motorcycle. And that's the thing. If you are so attached to that lead sled addiction, Harley retro engine noise around you, cramped um, seating posture, then you love the Harley. And that's what it is. And that's another thing I didn't mention is the comfort of the Indian. You have so much more room in stretching out your legs and your arms and the handlebars on that Indian are further out. And your body is further out. And your legs are further out. Versus the Harley is more you're in like this. And you're more cr crunched in on your body posture. The Indian is more like this. And it's such a, it's a huge difference. So Indian, in my eyes, did a fabulous job on the comfort and the um, confidence level of that motorcycle and i think they've done a great job getting the quality and the look of the bike and the controls of the bike look better than they did years ago it's so plastic and gaudy and yeah the harley definitely has i think the fit and finish in so many ways i think is as good or better but at the same time i don't know indians come a long way so but i like my harley product and the thing is for me i'm able to ride back to back these different motorcycles to really tell you the way, it, the way it is. It isn't like I'm telling you, well, years ago I owned this model. and No, I own them presently. So I can honestly tell you when I ride my Indian Street Glide that's a direct competitor to the Indian Chieftain, the Indian Chieftain is a more comfortable riding, more stable bike. When I ride my Indian Challenger, Elite Series, over my Road Glide, the Indian Challenger is a far more more comfortable, better riding bike than the CVO Road Glide. And, and then when I ride my Ultra Limited CVO Harley, I sold my Dark Horse um, Roadmaster last year, June of last year, and I can tell you that Roadmaster was a better riding motorcycle than the CVO. So, yeah, so why do I have them? Well, it's because I got a kid that got addicted to freaking Harley. Who created that problem, right? Yeah, we create our own comfort problems, right? I mean, it costs a lot of money to, to afford comfort. So, I think to myself, you know, where are we today? Where are we today in the state of times and, and what is going on in our country? And I just think to myself, I just said it to, to afford, to own comfortable things, it's usually expensive. I mean, you have to have money to, I mean, otherwise you don't own the comfortable things. That's just, that's just the way it works, the universe. So I think to myself, on the comfort side of our country, what are we doing? I mean, more than ever, it seems like the leaders of the country are appeasing to others to create comfort for them that in so many ways is creating so many problems more so than we've ever seen. I mean, it's, in, it's, is, is anybody ready to raise their hand and say we have a humanitarian crisis in our country? If you look at what's going on with all of the immigration, all the illegal, illegal immigration, here's Eric, what's it, Eric Adams out of New York, the mayor of New York. He is giving uh, towns, Eric Adams is now reaching out to towns in the state of New York and offering to pay them money to take these illegals out of their city. This is a fact. It's happening as we speak. 
one small town is declaring a state of emergency because Eric Adams is trying to send 4,100 legal immigrants to that town of 33,000 people. And the conditions of the people being brought in is they're going to pay the hotel owners or whatever property would accommodate these um, immigrants, they're going to pay them to house these people for for one year. It would be a contract you would sign with with the state of uh, New York that you're going to be compensated for housing these illegals in your uh, complex. And so Eric Adams is reaching out to all the localities and towns and giving them a heads up that they're going to start shipping out these illegals that are being shipped to their place from the Texas, you know, Greg Abbott that's shipping people out left and right across the country to get them out of their state for them to be a problem. And I just think, wow. So, you know, our governing bodies more than ever are going out of their way to comfort these illegals. And, but at the same time, it's, it's going to cost, you know, it's costing the American citizen and taxpayers um, huge sums of money to provide comfort to these um, foreign citizens. And you just think to yourself, and I've said it so many times, where is the conversation of the governing bodies that have had these people that don't take care of these people? Why are we not in a discussion with these governing bodies, these other countries that are shedding so many people because they don't want them to be comfortable in their own country and they want us to pay for their problems i mean that's what this is i mean i just don't i don't understand and and then you hear these conversations that people say yeah but we uh you know this country gives money to other countries and you know it's all about the goodwill of the united states helping others and this and that and that and i think yeah that's that's great so that's a great point we go out of our way to fund money to other countries. As we all know, there's all these bills get passed that is about comforting other countries for relationships. So where is all this money going that goes to these other countries where the, um, the citizens are leaving in the droves that are wanting to come to our country? It's not only going on here, it's going on in Europe too. So it isn't like we're the only country that's going through hardships of illegal immigration you know it's it's a european um, middle east problem as well i'm not as in depth on that but yeah that's going on as well so i think of myself we we live in a society more than ever where the leaders are trying to comfort others through sacrificing in so many ways others for their comfort and here's the latest this is so weird to me on how I started being so focused on the marijuana, and the potheads, the drug use, the remote working. And now here's, this is from Wall Street Journal. There now is a major article I read this morning that there's a 20%, or I shouldn't, I guess you'd say it's a 20% uptick in marijuana use in the workforce. And it's very challenging for the employers because marijuana is legal in a lot of states these days. So to appease the marijuana users and to comfort those that smoke marijuana, what they're saying is the employers are now actually in many businesses removing the marijuana test. And the reason they say that is because marijuana can be in somebody's blood system to up to like 30 days. So they feel like somebody could be off, you know, off work and smoking marijuana and then they're unfairly going to be called out that they're possibly smoking marijuana on the job and they would be, you know, lose their position when in all sincereness they weren't really doing that. But here's the challenge, which employers just to comfort those to stay with them, they don't want to know. Yeah, they just want, they want to take that test away from drug screening just because they know it's more challenging than ever to keep people find good people to work and they just don't want to, have to address that it's a debatable on whether they were smoking pot on the job or they weren't so there is a comfort level for those people that like to smoke marijuana the employers are trying to make your job more comfortable 
without you worrying about losing your job because you may have smoked pot on the job or you may have not, whatever it may be. So it's all about comforting others. Now here's um, mayor of D.C. She, this is incredible, in D.C., it was, I mean, it's gone to Congress. It's, it's, D.C. is right now rewriting the criminal laws. And apparently, um, the way it's going to play out is in D.C., the lawless city is pretty much here. They're going to start letting out criminals that are in jail that they feel are just minor offenses. They're not going to persecute you know, criminal activity per se. That's so. I mean, for DC, this is you can look it up in Washington, DC. They've just passed new bills to really comfort the criminals. That's where we are more than ever in our society. We are living in comforting the criminals. You're, you're, you're now no doubt going to have career criminals never seen in modern times. Because of the laws, are you know the raising the you know the height of what's a crime versus what's a punishable crime, and wow, wow, <laughs> just incredible. So for DC, you know, is DC the next uh, LA, New York, Chicago? Just incredible. And what's going on? Once again, the words comfort the leaders of our country and political figures and even big business in so many ways, they want to comfort those that can't live in reality and can't live in, you know, the real circumstances of you need to work to earn a living, to be able to buy things versus you don't work and you steal from others and you live off of uh, criminal activity and the drugs, you know, you know, don't enforce the laws of the drug habits. And, and here's the thing. What's really sad is the fentanyl use is continuing to uh, grow in the deaths of uh, the young people. They're saying right now, the, from the one-year-old to the 19-year-old youth of our country, it's now at the highest level of death rate in like the last like 25 years. So we're the rising rate of young people of suicide, homicide, and uh, drug overdose, it's on the rise. And you have to say to yourself, it's all about the comfort. They talk about in great length about how uh, the technology age, uh, pandemic-related challenges, you know, the, the kids were all separated from each other and there's a lot, you know, a lot of variables, but you just read these horrendous stories of this one lady's son was a marijuana user, and her husband and her worked diligently to get him away from marijuana, only for the their son to go buy a pill that was a uh, laced fentanyl, and the next morning he was lifeless when they walked in his bedroom, and so, you know, once again, what's what's the drug use? drug abuse about it's about one trying to comfort themselves from their challenges their mental challenges which only creates more mental challenges and that's you know anybody's used marijuana on a regular basis it's a known fact that your living in reality over the long term turns into uh not so much you're just not you're just not here all right i think i'm going to just wrap it up with that that we live in a time on one aspect of life that we're all working so hard to comfort one another. You know, there's organizations out there. There's church. There's, you know, incredible structure in our country for us to try to help each other and comfort each other. And for the military, that's very challenging. You'll hear those stories of people that don't feel that it's been done enough for them. I, I hear, you know, that's a sad story. That's what I think about is we have our own um, challenges in our own country for our own sitting people and citizens, but yet we're handing out loads of money to everybody else and, you know, it just doesn't, you know, what are you accomplishing through all this? Yeah, I know. It gets deep, so leave it at that. 
But anyways, well, I hope everybody has a really comfortable day today. It's a beautiful day here. Plenty of things for me to do. That's for sure. And once again, appreciate all the support. Appreciate all the uh, nice comments. And hope everybody has a great day. And stay safe. God bless. And stay tuned.